So, um, this is a, uh, the last um, portion of the discussion on uh, Board of Directors and Trustees and Officers of the Revised Corporation Code. So, this is Law 20.023, Business Laws and Regulations. So, kung narinigaw kayo, pwede niyo pa rin naman panoorin. Baka may matutunan kayo one thing or two from this lecture video. Sayang na naman kung may matututunan tayo. Ang panimula, aking sabihin yung tinatawag na threefold duties of a director. Kung ikaw daw ay isang magiging membro ng board of directors, meron ka tatlong um, duties. <laughs> Tagalit tagal ng duties. Tatlong obligasyon. Meron kang duty OLD yan. Uh, obedience. Obedience. Loyalty. Duty of loyalty. And duty of diligence. Yeah, so may tatlo kang duties bilang board member, member ng board of directors. Obedience, loyalty, and diligence na uh, yan yung topic from section 30 onwards. Actually, although meron pang isang section about uh, the executive committee, pero ito, ito yung magiging ano, uh, ito yung iikuti ng ating discussion for this lecture video. Yun nga lang may extra topic nga lang on yung tawag ito, on the executive committee. So, Ano itong page 16 of 72? Wait lang. <clears throat> Mama Jipin ko kasi may something dito. Page 16 of 73. Then, magic. So, sabi ng section 30, directors or trustees who willfully and knowingly vote for or assent to patently unlawful acts of the corporation or those who are guilty of gross negligence or bad faith in the direct in directing the affairs of the corporation or acquire any personal or pecuniary interest in conflict with their duty as such directors or trustees shall be liable jointly and severally for all damages resulting therefrom suffered by the corporation its stockholders members, and other persons. So dito may babala. No? Babala, asawa ni Babalu. Babala, may babala ang uh, revised corporation code. Ano ang babala niya? Yung mga director daw at mga trustee na willful, ibig sabihin sinasadya nila at nalalaman nila, no? alam na alam nila, sinasadya nilang bumoto no? or pumayag doon sa mga illegal or unlawful acts of the corporation. Ayun yung una. They willfully or knowingly vote for or assent to patently, un patently unlawful acts. Or, number two, they are guilty of gross negligence or guilty of bad faith in the directing the affairs of the corporation naging pabaya sila. No? Gross negligence. Sa, sa oblikon, natutunan niyo yung concept ng negligence or bad faith. No? Pabaya, naging pabaya itong uh, itong uh, member ng board of director na ito. Or, they have acquired any personal or pecuniary interest which is in conflict with their duty as director or trustee. So, mer merong conflict of interest whether personal or pecuniary, pera ang involved, per personal or pecuniary interest which is in conflict with their duty as director or trustee. Ano daw ang mangyayari kung ikaw bilang membro ng director or bilang membro ng board of directors or board of trustees ay ginawa ito 1, 2, and 3. Ikaw daw ay mananagot. Hmm? Liable, mananagot. Jointly and severally, kung marami kayo, 
joint ni Ensemble ni ibig sabihin kahit na pa marami kayo kahit sino sa inyo ay pwedeng panagutin doon sa damages. Damages ni you know, damages ng corporation, damages ng stockholders or ng members or even damages to be suffered or which has been suffered by a third person, other persons. A director, trustee, or officer shall not attempt, not attempt, huwag mo na daw subukan, to acquire or acquire any interest adverse the corporation kasi meron ka ang duty of loyalty. My duty of loyalty ka. So you, don't, you, you should not attempt to acquire or you should not acquire any interest which is in conflict to the interest or adverse to the interest of the corporation in respect to any matter which has been reposed upon you in confidence or upon which equity imposes a disability upon themselves to deal in their own behalf. So wag kang magiging supplier ng sariling korporasyon. Huwag mong kunin yung servisyo ng sarili mong, end, sarili mong kumpanya para dun sa korporasyon kasi conflict yan. No? You owe your duty of loyalty to the corporation. Otherwise, otherwise kung hindi mo nagsundin yung loyalty duty mo, the director, the trustee, or the officer will be liable as trustee for the corporation and must account for the profits which otherwise would have accrued to the corporation. So dito, sinasabi niya na kung merong opportunity, no, kunyari merong opportunity, yung corporation na kumita, for example, merong prospective na client, tapos itong director, sabi niya, eh, malaki kikitain ng corporation dito. Why not introduce ko yung sarili kong kumpanya? Meron siyang, for example, na sole proprietorship doon. At sinabi niya, dito ka na lang sa sole proprietorship. Sinungkit niya ba? Sinungkit niya na, na nasungkit niya yung kliyente. Uh, ang sabi dito, hindi sa kanya yon. Kung ano man yung kikitain niya doon sa transaction na yon, kailangan niya yung panghawakan bilang trusty lamang for the corporation. And he or she must account for the profits which otherwise would have accrued to the corporation. So kung ano man yung tinatawag natin, ang tinatawag natin dito, kung ano man yung tinatawag natin na opportunity cost, eh, nakatawag natin sa accounting, kung ano man yung opportunity cost na dapat sa corporation mapunta, pero dahil nga doon sa uh, ginawang paraan itong stockholder na ito, ay yung stockholder ng director or ng trustee or ng officer, para sa kanya mapunta itong kinikitain supposedly ng isang corporation ay hindi sa kanya yon Pinangahawakan lang yun bilang trustee for the corporation at required siya to account for it. No? Yung profits na kinita, kailangan niyang i-account at ibigay sa corporation. That's section 30. Section 31. Okay. A contract of the corporation with one or more of its directors, trustees, or officers, or their spouse and relatives within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity is voidable at the option of the corporation. <clears throat> so defective, no? siguro na pag-usapan ninyo sa obligations and contracts, sa law and obligations and contracts na hindi lang ang, ang kontrata ay hindi lang perfectly valid and void. Merong nasa pagitan nila. Diba tinatawag natin defective contracts? So we have resistible contracts, voidable contracts, unenforceable contracts, and void contracts. Now, I will not go through them one by one. No? Ang sabi ng section 31, ang status daw ng mga kontrata kung saan no kung saan yung isang partido ay one or more directors, trustees or officers or yung asawa nila or yung relative nila within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity ang status daw ng ng kontrata na yon ay voidable upon the option or upon the instance of the corporation so kunyari send excuse me, seller and buyer. Ang seller, for example, ay yung corporation. Ex-corporation. Ang buyer mo, for example, ICA. 
Kung si A ay director ng X Corporation, si A ay trustee ng X Corporation, si A ay asawa ng director or trustee ng X Corporation, or si A ay kapatid, or pinsan, or uncle, or lolo, yan, mga relatives within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity, or pamangkin ng trustee or officer ng X Corporation, yan, ang kontrata na yan ay voidable. Pag sabing voidable, valid siya until annulled. Hindi void ang mga voidable. Kaya nga siya voidable. Eh. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo siyang ipavoid. Pero bago mo siya ipavoid, or technically ang tawag nun, bago mo siya ipaanal, A-N-N-U-L, ang status ng kontrata ay valid. So valid until annulled. Yan yung mga voidable contracts. So ang sabi dito, ang status daw ng korporasyon, ay ng korporasyon ng kontrata rather, ko ang kontrata na pinasok ng korporasyon, yung kakontrata niya, yung other party, is either a, di a director, a trustee, an officer, or a spouse or a relative within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity of the director, trustee, or officer. Um, voidable yan. Voidable, valid, until anal. Sinong pwedeng magpa-anal nung kontrata na yan. Pwede bang yung buyer ang magpa-anal ng kontrata? Pwede bang siya? Hindi. Ang may karapatan lang to have the uh, tawag dito, the contract annulled ay yung corporation. No? It is upon the option of the corporation. Okay. Pero maaaring ito ay hindi voidable kung ang mga sumusunod ay present. Una, The presence of such director or trustee in the board meeting in which the contract was approved was not necessary to constitute a quorum for such meeting. Pangalawa, the vote of such director or trustee was not necessary for the approval of the contract. And pangatlo, the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Oh, let's see. Contract between the corporation and X where X is a member of the board of directors of a corporation. Supposedly, this contract is voidable. Pero, say, ilan ang membro ng board of directors? Let's say, si, ang membro ay si R, S, T, U, D, W, and X. Sila yung mga sitting members of the board of directors of a corporation. At the time na pinagmitingan kung aaprobahan ba itong kontrata na ito sa pagitan between sa pagitan nila A Corporation and X, tandaan si X ay miyembro ng Board of Directors. Ang umatend, no, ang umatend doon sa meeting na yon ay si R, si S, si T, si U, si B. Si W wala. Si X ang doon, umaten siya. Okay. Unang tanong, ito yung, letter, ito yung una nating pag-itignan. Yung presence ba ni X, umaten siya ng meeting eh. Yung presence niya ba ay required para magkaroon ng quorum for that meeting? Ilan ba sila? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 sila. Ilan ang quorum natin pag 7? Apat. E umaten si X, si RSTUV. Ilan ang umaten? Anin. Required ba yung presence ni X para magkaroon ng quorum? Ibig sabihin, kung wala ba si X doon, nagkaroon ba ng quorum? Kung wala si X dito, kung hindi siya umaten doon sa meeting, kung kailan aaprobahan yung kontrata between E Corporation and X, ang umaten ay si R, S, T, U, and V. Kung hindi mo bibilangin si X, lima lang sila. At dahil lima lang sila, naka, tawag dito, nakapag, nakakuha pa rin tayo ng quorum. Dahil nakakuha pa rin tayo ng quorum kahit hindi natin bilangin si X, na-meet natin yung requirement letter A. Now let's go to requirement letter B. Let's see, ang pumunta, ang umaten ay si R, 
si A, si T, si U, si D, at si X. Iyan sila, anim. Ano ang majority ng anim? Six, ang majority niyan ay, uh, hindi three, four pa rin. Four. Let's say, ang bumoto. Uh, isa sa mga uh, agenda natin for today ay yung pag-approve ng kontrata between A Corporation and X. Ang nag-agree ay si R, si S, si T, si U hindi, si V hindi, si X nag-agree. Siyempre, agree siya. Kontrata niya yun. Apat. Four out of six ay majority. May quorum ka kasi anim lang umatend at majority ng anim ay apat. Ang nag-approve si R, si S, si T, at saka si X. Considered ba yan as approved? Considered ba yan as hindi voidable? Ay, kasi voidable siya dito eh. Considered ba yan as hindi voidable? The answer is voidable siya. Bakit siya voidable? Kasi hindi mo nakuha yung requirement letter B. Ano ba yung requirement letter B? The vote of such director or trustee was not necessary for the approval of the contract. Ibig sabihin kung tinanggal ba natin si X na sa nag-approve, si X tanggalin mo siya. Ang nag-approve lang ay si RSNT, which is only three, which is not the majority. At dahil hindi siya majority, no? hindi siya majority, kinailangan ngayon yung boto ni X para ma-approve yung kontrata. At dahil kinailangan yung boto ni X para ma-approve yung kontrata, what will apply is the rule that the contract is voidable. Itong ini-enumerate natin, dapat maging present siya para hindi maging voidable yung kontrata. Let's say for example, ang nag-approve ng kontrata ay si R, si S, si T, si U, si B hindi siya agree, si W absent, si X syempre nag-agree siya kasi kontrata niya yun, mag-agree siya. So kung makikita natin, na-meet nila yung requirement. Bakit? O, kahit na, kahit ang ganun pa yung boto ni X eh, uh, obvious naman na boboto siya niya, dapat nag-abstain na lang siya. Pero let's say yan, umatin, umatin siya at boboto siya to approve the contract. Kahit natanggalin niya yung boto niya, sapat yung boto ni R, S, T, and U para ma-approvehan yung contract. Hindi necessary yung vote ni X to approve da or uh, to approve the contract. Yan yung pangatlo. E pangalawa pala, Roger. Yung pangatlo, the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances, which is a business judgment. Yung natin alam yung kung ano yung fair and reasonable, walang exact measure kung ano ang fair and reasonable. Ang fair and reasonable is in a case-to-case -case basis. So kung ang pinag-uusapan dito ay pagtayo ng uh, two-floor na building, maaaring fair and reasonable ang 5 million. Pero kung ang pinag-uusapan ay uh, 40 floors na building, maaari hindi fair and reasonable ang 5. Lugi nga siya kung 5 million lang. Uh, balik na natin yung example. Kung ang pinag-uusapan pinag ay 40 floors na building, maaaring fair and reasonable ang, let's say, 1 billion. Maaari lang. I don't know kung I'm not engaged in the ano, in construction industry. Pero just to put the things in perspective, maaari na yung 1 billion worth of contract no, between a corporation and X, kunyari si X ay merong construction company, no, yung 1 billion for the 40 floor building ay maaaring reasonable. Pero kung ang pag-uusapan ay 2 floor building lang naman, maaaring hindi na reasonable yung uh, 1 billion. No? 1 billion. Maaaring hindi na siya reasonable, maaaring nag-take advantage na, na disadvantages na to the corporation, yung decision na i-grant kay X na baka we are giving undue benefits kay X to grant yung uh, 1 billion contract na yan. Ganun siya. Ganun siya nag-work. It is in a case-to-case -case basis. Ah, meron pa tayong additional. In case corporations vested with public interest, material contracts are approved by at least two-thirds of the entire membership of the board with at least a majority of independent directors voting to approve the material contract. So in case yung public interest natin, na paulit-ulit niya lang ito, mga banko, insurance company, utility companies, etc., etc., non-stock savings and loan association, yan. These are corporations vested in public interest. So yung kontrata dapat daw aprubahan ng two-thirds of the entire membership of the board of directors. At dapat majority ng independent directors ay mag approve doon sa material contract. Napag-usapan na natin kung sino yung mga independent directors before. 
in case of an officer, the contract has been previously authorized by the Board of Directors. Tandaan ng officer ay hindi necessary na Board of Directors. So kung, kung officer ka, syempre hindi ka naman boboto. Ba, hindi ka naman boboto dun kasi Board of Directors ang bumo, mga boboto eh. So hindi ka kasama dun sa mga requirement A, B, C, ganyan. Kasi wala ka naman dun. Officer ka, hindi ka director. Pero kung officer ka, ang requirement is that meron ng prior approval or authority ng board of directors ang pantrata na yan. <clears throat> Still section 31, where any of the first three conditions set forth in the preceding paragraph is absent in case of a contract with a director or trustee, such contract may be ratified by the vote of the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock or of at least two-thirds of the members in a meeting called for the purpose. So, for example, hindi mo na-meet itong A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Ito yung first three. Binabanggit na dito. First three conditions. Ibig sabihin, kinailangan yung voto ni X para magkaroon ng... Ay, kinailangan yung presence ni X para magkaroon ng quorum. Kinailangan yung voto ni X para magkaroon ng approval at hindi fair and reasonable yung kontrata na yan, maaari pa rin siyang i-ratify. Pag sinabing ratify no, sa batas natin, ang ibig sabihin yan, cleansing of defects. So defective yung kontrata, pero pwede mo siyang i-ratify. Pwede mong patawarin kung baga, pwede mong tanggalin, pwede mong kalimutan na siya ay defective. Ratification ang tawag doon. Ibig sabihin, merong approval ng no, mga stockholders. Tandaan nyo, dito sa level na ito, ang nag approve pa lang ay yung board of directors. Usually, yung mga stockholders, they do not vote doon sa mga kontrata na pinapasok ng korporasyon. Trabaho na yan ng board of directors. Pero kung merong uh, kontrata na covered ng Section 31, at hindi na meet yung requirements A, B, and C, yung first three requirements, papasok na ngayon sa kwento ang mga stockholders or members, stockholders in a stock corporation or members in in a stock corporation. They have to ratify that contract by a vote of at least two-thirds of the standing capital stock or two-thirds of the members. Again, this meeting should be called for that purpose. No? and provided that full disclosure of the adverse interest of the directors or trustees involved is made at such meeting and the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. So, yaan, kailangan nilang maging honest, kumbaga maging, kailangan, maging transparent kung ano ba yung extent ng adverse interest ng director or trustees para makapag-decide ng tama, no? para ma-inform ng tama para yung decision nila ay maging reasonable and fair doon sa circumstances. Okay. Kasi kung itatago-tago mo lang din mo yung information, hindi wala rin kwenta na nagparatify ka pa sa mga stockholders if they do not know the background of the uh, kung ba't kayo nagpapa-approve in the first place. Section 100, uh, section 32, slide 100 pala ito. Section 32, except in cases of fraud, and provided that the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances, a contract between two or more corporations having interlocking directors shall not be invalidated on, the, on that ground alone. Anong ibig sabihin ito? <clears throat> a corporation, B corporation. X is a director of A corporation. X is a director of B corporation. There is now a contract between A corporation and B corporation. And yan yung point ng section 32. Ito a con is it, it is a contract between two or more corporations with interlocking or common directors. Doon sa unang doon sa section 31, ang kontrata is between a corporation and a director, a trustee, an officer, a spouse, or a, rel a relative between the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity. Nasa kanilang pagitan yung kontrata. Itong nasa section 32 ay nasa pagitan ng dalawang korporasyon, pero yung dalawang korporasyon na yan ay merong interlocking director. 
meron silang common director. So in this case, si X, director siya ni A, corporation, director din siya ng B, corporation. Yan, interlocking director ang tawag siya. Ang sabi ng section 32, hindi daw dahil merong interlocking director, invalidated na siya. No? It shall not be invalidated on that ground alone. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin, ay, invalid yan kasi si X parehas si nag-decide on the part of A corporation and B corporation. That alone is not a ground for to invalidate that contract. Pero kung may fraud, okay yun. That is a ground. If the contract is not fair and reasonable, that is a ground. Pero kung may interlocking directors, not a ground. Not a ground alone. To invalidate that contract. Okay. Section 32, continuation, provided that if the interest of the interlocking director in one corporation is substantial and the interest in the other corporation or corporations is nominal, the contract shall be subject to the provisions of the preceding section insofar as the latter corporation corporations are concerned. Stockholding exceeding 20% of the outstanding capital stock shall be considered substantial for the purposes of interlocking directors. Ano ibig sabihin niya dito? Balikan natin si A Corporation and B Corporation. Kung saan, meron silang common stockholder, ay, stockholder, common, uh, tawag dito, common director, no? interlocking director si A. Si X, ang kanyang interest, no? ang kanyang interest sa A Corporation ay substantial. Ang kanyang interest sa B Corporation ay nominal. Anong ibig sabihin nun? 20%. Kapag ang interest na dito ay 20% or more, substantial yun. Ang interest na sa B Corporation, let's say 5% lang, then that is merely nominal. Substantial sa isa, nominal dun sa isa. Ang sabi dito, the contract shall be subject to the provision of the preceding section in so far as the latter corporation is concerned. Ibig sabihin, yung requirement ng section 31 ay dapat present in so far as the corporation where the interest of the interlocking director is nominal. Ano yung mga requirements na yun? Yung presence niya is not required to constitute a quorum. Yung vote niya is not required for the approval of the contract. The terms and conditions of the, of the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. <clears throat> Yun yung requirements no? ng Section 31. Hindi na siya ihahanapin sa dito sa unang uh, corporation kung saan substantial yung kanyang ah uh, ito yung kanyang interest if the interest is both substantial section 32 will not apply if the interest is both nominal section 32 will not apply section 32 will apply only if the interest in one is substantial the interest in the other is nominal and the requirement of section 31 is required doon sa corporation kung saan yung interest nung Interlocking director ay nominal. Again, the presence of that director is not required to constitute a quorum. The vote of that director is not required for the approval of the contract. And the terms and conditions of the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. <clears throat> Section 33. When a director, by virtue of such office, acquires a business opportunity, he should belong to the corporation, thereby obtaining profits to the prejudice of such corporation, the director must account for and refund to the latter all such profits unless the act has been ratified by a vote of the stockholders owning or representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. This provision shall be applicable notwithstanding the fact that the director risks one's own funds in the venture. So dito, pinag-uusapan dito ay yung 
pagkakaroon ng business opportunity outside the corporation and we should have inured to the benefit of the corporation. Again, this is an issue of opportunity cost. No? Kaya katulad ng pinag-uusapan natin kanina. Kung sakali na itong business opportunity ay sa corporation sana, pero sinungkit mo? Sinulot mo bilang director? Inunahan mo yung corporation? Anong, anong role natin dyan? Kung ano man yung profits na kinita mo because of that venture, will you have to hold that in trust of, for the corporation and you have to give that to the corporation. You have to refund it, to account it and refund it, deliver it to the corporation. Pero, hindi ka required gawin yan. Hindi ka required na ibigay sa korporasyon. Yung mga kinita mo in that uh, venture, in that pagsasarili mo, no? pagsulot mo, nung kontrata, kung yung ginawa mo na yan ay ratified. Again, may problema, may defect. Pero kapag ni-ratify, ano nangyayari? You are cleansing it. No? Cleansing it of defect. Defective yan. Eh. Dapat ibalik mo yan sa korporasyon o ibigay mo yan sa korporasyon. Pero kung i-ratify yan, pumapayag, nagko-consent, umu-okay, sabi ng, corp- ng mga stockholders, okay na yan. Cleanse na yan of the defect. Then, hindi mo na kailangan siyang i-account at i-refund to the corporation. Pero no, napaka no, lungkot kung magkakaroon ng ratification ng mga ganyan sitwasyon. Anyway, it's up to the stockholders if they want to ratify, then so be it, i-ratify nyo. Sila naman yung may say dyan. And the section 34, yung nabangit ko sa inyo about the creation of what we call an executive committee. No? If the bylaws are provided, the board may create this body, what we call an executive committee, composed of at least three directors. The committee may act by a majority vote of all its members on such specific matters within the competence of the board as may be delegated to it in the bylaws or by majority vote of the board of directors. So, ibig sabihin, pwede kayong, kunyari, ang board of directors ay sampu, pwede mag-create ng tatlo lang. Ang tawag sa kanila, executive committee. And yung decision ng tatlo na yan ay maaaring uh, pamalit doon sa decision ng sampu. Pero, dapat itong arrangement na ito ay authorized in the bylaws. Ibig sabihin, may approval pa rin ito ng stockholders. At least three. So, pwedeng apat sila, pwedeng lima. Ibig sabihin, ang point lang, kung nahihirap, may mga corporation kasi na nahihirap ang makakuha ng quorum. Lalo na kung malaki yung membership ng board of directors, kinari sampu. At any given time, para makapag-meet sila at maging valid yung meetings nila, kailangan at least aning present. Kunyari, hirap na hirap silang kunin yung schedule ng at least na aning or pag tugmatugmain yung schedule ng aning na yan, pinakamagandang gawin, pinakapraktikal na gawin ay gumawa kayo ng executive committee. Mas maliit na body lang yan, three or four or five, kung kaya nyo yung five. Yan. Pero asabi dito, at least three. At yung tatlo na yan, they can act. May majority vote on the specific matters within the competence of the board of directors. Yung mga pwedeng gawin ng sampu ay i-delegate daw dyan sa tatlo na yan. Or kung ano man i-delegate sa kanila ng bylaws. By majority vote of the, or by majority vote of the board of directors. Ang hindi pwedeng aksyonan ng executive committee ay ang mga sumusunod. Una, approval of any action which requires the approval of the stockholders. May mga may mga decision na dapat nag-decide yung mga stockholders gaya ng asimid, part yun, yung approval ng mga con- uh, uh, tawag ito, conflicting contracts or defective contracts. Ganyan yun. Yung mga ratification na required yan, majority vote, removal, etc. etc. Kung saan ang bumaboto ay yung mga stockholders. Hindi pwede na yung executive committee yung gagawa. Kasi ang replace ang ang executive tandaan niyo ang executive committee ay replacement lamang for the board no yung mga decisions ng board pwede i-delegate to sa executive committee hindi decisions ng stockholders yung stockholders boto nila yon sarili nila yon pero yung sa board yung sa board pwede ipasa sa executive committee feeling of vacancies in the board so pag feeling of vacancies in the board dapat 
if allowed under the discussion, no? of course, one of the discussions that we made earlier, then yung board ang mag-fill up no vacancy, hindi yung executive committee. Amendment or repeal of bylaws or adoption of new bylaws, actually, repetition ito ng letter A. Kasi yung letter A ay mga action which requires approval of the stockholders. A amendment or repeal of bylaws or adoption of new bylaws requires the approval of the shareholders. So hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan ng executive level na executive committee lamang. Amendment or repeal of any re resolution of the board which by its express terms is not amendable or repealable. So kung yung buong board of directors, yung buong membership, gumawa sila ng resolution, nagpasla ng resolution, nilagay na sa resolution na yun, ay hindi ito pwedeng i-amend or hindi ito pwedeng i-repeal, malinaw na hindi mo siya pwedeng i-amend or repeal unless yung buong board ang mag amend or mag-repeal, hindi yung executive committee lang. At finally, ang executive committee ay hindi maaari mag-decide on the distribution of cash dividends or to the stockholders. Ang, de ang decision kung mag-declare ba o hindi ng cash dividends remain remains to be with the entire board of directors, not just with the uh, executive committee. The board of directors may create special committees or temporary of temporary or permanent nature and determine the members' term, composition, compensation powers, and responsibilities. So pwede magkaroon ng mga committee or subcommittee within the board of directors. So for example, pwede magkaroon ng let's say, finance committee, operations committee, compensation committee, uh, promotions committee, etc., etc. So within the board, so para meron bang technical aspect, for example, o itong, kunyari, sampu sila, o apat, si A, B, C, and D, members sila ng board, pero sila ngayon yung magiging membro, for example, ng finance committee, kasi background nila, mga CPA sila eh. So, ano sila, pwede silang maupo doon sa finance committee, para yung decisions regarding sa finance ng company, uh, maganda yung, ano, maganda yung magiging resulta, na pag-isipan ng mabuti, kasi alam natin na, Kung itiwala tayo na yung apat na yun, gagawin nyo yung trabaho na kasi masipin sila. O legal committee, for example. O oh, si A, B, and si, si X, Y, and si mga lawyers yan. Uh, sila yung magkakonsitute ng uh, legal committee. For example, lang ganun. compliance committee kasi alam nila yung mga batas na kailangan i-comply ng corporation na to. So at least, no, we have three lawyers. No? Alam na naman makamiss out pa. E tatlo na nga sila dyan. Ganun yung point ng mga committee na yan. Pwede lang gawin. Tapos, they have to indicate their the term, the composition, the compensation, the powers, and responsibilities of the members in that special committee. Okay? So that's it for uh, stockholder, uh, directors, trustees, and um, officers of the corporation. So for the future discussion, malamang hindi na magiging ganito hindi ko na siya papadaanan ng per section. No? Kasi mauubos yung oras ko kung gagawin ko siyang per section. Medyo marami rin pa yung coverage kailangan maghabol ng lecture. So, topical na ngayon yung aking magiging discussion after nitong lecture break na to. In any case, thank you for watching. Hopefully, may natutunan kayo. If wala, I'm sorry. No? Pero kung gusto nyo itry uli para nyo matutunan, you can just replay the video and other and other videos in this channel thank you for watching and goodbye <clears throat>